15 jumping efforts on the course. Here you can see the Kegel and Corral that uh, comes up for them at 6 and 7. So we start off today with uh, reverse order of merit based on yesterday's results. Jennifer McFall and High Times have the dubious honour of being first in. Peter Barry and Eddie Kilroden Abbott come in as our first international visitor. We've got Alice Dunstan, Fernhill present, and Bellani Rock, Selena Hannon also flying the flag for uh, others than the United States of America. Dr. Kevin Keane, Fernhill Flutter, he had a great round yesterday, just uh, 20 penalties added to his score and some time as well, but he is on course for his first Rolex completion. And it's a veterinary surgeon who's supported so many of these riders to four star themselves. He's going to be one of the most popular completers here in the horse park. So I'm going to bring in uh, Karen, Karen O'Connor with me for uh, some of the coverage today alongside Liz Halliday Sharp as well, who'll be in later on. But uh, Karen, you've had a look at the course. What do you think it's going to uh, achieve today? I, I really like the course today. Richard Jeffries is a, a world-renowned show jumping course designer for both eventing and pure show jumping. He's laid out a, a lovely course. Um, it's quite vertical and quite wide. Uh, I think he's He's inviting the horse, the riders to be a little bit slow in the first four fences. The first four fences are spread out quite, quite far apart, and that always gets the riders just a little bit slow. Uh, so we have our first to second fence. And that line is, is lovely. It's, uh, it's going to go in seven strides, um, and I think that the riders then turn right-handed just in front of the sponsor's uh, pavilion, and they come to the third fence, which is a you know, vertical, so your second fence and your third fence are verticals. Then you turn away from the crowd and jump your fourth fence, which is a very square, upright boxer. Back around to your fifth fence, which is a triple bar. And a triple bar is, is low at the, in the front and high and, and wide behind. And so you have to have quite a lot of momentum there. And then from the fifth fence, you move on to the sixth fence. It's a related distance. There are six or seven strides there. It's going to be rider's choice and the ability to have the riders really make a decision. Six to seven is four strides, back down around to your eighth fence, which is uh, a very square ox with Liverpool under it, going into nine AB, which is Oxford of vertical. Swing right around to 10, and 10 is again another big oxer, and then swing wide again for your final loop, which is 11 ABC, vertical going in, oxer, which is a little bit far away, at 11 B, and even a fourth oxer further away in two strides at 11 C. Related distance to 12, which is your last vertical, very tricky, don't breathe over that. And then another choice for the riders in their striding to not get in too big of a hurry, nah. going straight for the end gate to the final fence at, thir at 13. So a great uh, setup there from Karen O'Connor, telling us about all of the things these riders will need to think about, not just getting over the jumps, but how they get to the jumps on those related distances. Will they choose six or seven between five and six as they jump the big triple bar and go into the Kinoland complex? Keep an eye on that and one or two other places around the course that Karen will keep our eyes on for us. We start off with Jennifer, Jennifer McFall, Jennifer with high times, combination that were 10th at Galway Downs, three star in March. They had 20 jumping penalties on the course yesterday and a good few time sees them on an overnight score of 151.5 and holding 37th position. Having a good start, the horse is uh, very, was quite lofty over the first two jumps, which is, means that he, feeling no tiring, caught that behind. Uh, he tucks his hind legs under him, which sometimes the horse can catch that. I like to see the hind end open up behind instead of tucking inside. Now she's coming around to that fifth fence, the triple bar. You want to get really close to it, but with lots of momentum. And that was a good ride. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So she picked the outside line and now in four strides. Okay, so having a few rubs, what that tells, and that tells the other riders that you can have a rub without having a knockdown, which means that the cups are holding. They're two centimeters in depth. And yet that one didn't hold because she hit it so hard on the way up. You've uh, you've jumped quite a bit down in Wellington and, and elsewhere, Karen. These are actually a little bit deeper because of That's the right. test right. of, than pure show jumping yeah, cups. Yeah, for sure, my mistake. Um, and I jumped a lot of Richard's, a lot of Richard's jumps this winter or, and in the past years. Um, I've watched so many of his courses. He really makes it a horseman's course. Got to be able to have the horse organized. Mm, very frustrating. 
So 84 seconds for time allowed. So inside the time, it is 171.5 at the end of their three days for Jennifer McFall and High Times. Of course, just, just kept, catches it with the hind legs. And then has to kick up, and I think that's not always easy in a three-day event. And comes down on the back rail. We always say the back rail is the riders. You must have enough momentum to get that back rail done. Well, just a confirmed score coming in. Jennifer McFall did just trip over the uh, 84 seconds time allowed we heard announced. So it is, in fact, 21 to add. It's going to be 172.5. Any commenced fraction of a second over 84, and it will be a uh, penalty. Yeah, they round, they round the actual time up to the next second, so we end up with the penalty point. Lindsay Oaks now and Enchanté holding 36th position on 131.1 penalties. They were one of the combinations to have problems in the first quarter yesterday at the sea element coming out. They were eliminated cross-country last year, so this is them seeking their first ever four-star completion.